electronic devices Recording in to progress. vibrate. Mr. Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the state of meeting of February 16th, 2023. A happy belated Valentine's Day to everybody. I'm uh, Majority Leader Keith Powers. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today. If you'd like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please call the roll call. Abreu. Present. Ariola. Aviles. Presente. Ayala. Here. Barron. Here, they got me seated way in the back. I'm back here. Could you see me? Thank here. you, Councilmember. I just want to let them know you put me in the back. That's all. We see uh, you. <laughs> Botcher. We also hear you. Here. Brannon. Here. Brewer. Brooks Powers. Caban. Present. Carr. De La Rosa. Here. Dinowitz. Present. Farias. Felice. Presente. Gennaro. Here. Gutierrez. Presente. Hanif. Here. Hanks. Present. Holden. I'm here. Carr. Here. Hudson. Here. Joseph. Present. Kagan. Here. Krishnan. Here. Lee. Here. Lewis. Present. Marte. Here. Mealy. Menon. Here. Moya. Here. Narcisse. Present. Nurse. Here. Osei. Present. Paladino. Here. Brewer. Here. Wrestler. Here. Richardson Jordan. Present. Riley. Present. Ariola. Here. Rivera. Salamanca. Present. Sanchez. Present. Shulman. Here. Mealy. Present. Stevens. Here. Ung. Present. Velasquez. Present. Vernikoff. Here. Williams. Present. Juan. Here. Jaeger. Here. Borelli. Present. Powers. I'm here. Speaker Adams. Present. Invocation. None. Thank you. We'll now have the adoption of the minutes by Council Member Jim Gennaro. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of January 19th, 2023 be adopted as printed. Thank you. We'll now go to messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. 
land use call-ups? None. Thank you. And we're going to, before we head over, I just want to welcome, I see we have Assembly Member Raj Kumar in the upstairs, and I also want to welcome Errol Lewis and his students here as well today. If we could welcome them to the City Council Chamber. Thank you for being with us here today. We'll now go to communication from Speaker Adrian Adams. Thank you, Majority Leader, very much. And good afternoon once again, everyone. I hope you all had a very good Valentine's Day with your loved ones. I'd like to begin today by encouraging all New Yorkers of the continued importance of being fully vaccinated and getting your latest booster shots to protect yourselves and your loved ones from COVID-19. Before I continue, I want to take a moment to remember the life of NYPD officer Adid Fayez, who was laid to rest last week. Officer Fayez was a beloved father, son, and dedicated public servant. As a city, we're still mourning his loss, and we send our thoughts and condolences to his family and loved ones during this very difficult time. I also want to acknowledge the at least eight New Yorkers who were injured and one person who was killed when a U-Haul truck was driven into pedestrians in southern Brooklyn. We extend our thoughts to the family and, and loved ones of Yi Ji Yi, a 44-year-old delivery worker and single father of three boys who lost his life senselessly. We're also praying for a full and speedy recovery for those who were injured after this terrible inc uh, incident. And as we do during every other stated meeting, I want to take a second to honor the lives of New Yorkers who died in their workplace. This week, we're sending our love to the family of Carlos Garcia Ramos, a 38-year-old delivery worker from Washington Heights who was tragically killed while on the job. Colleagues, please join me in a moment of silence to remember Officer Adid Fayez, Yi Ji Yi, Carlos Garcia Ramos, and every other New Yorker who lost their lives since we were last together. Thank you. As we talk about safety and violence, whether it's gun violence, traffic violence, or even workplace safety, we must acknowledge the lack of safety that many communities still face. Black communities and communities of color have endured violence and trauma, even when headlines focused on record levels of safety in our city and too often lacked investments in supporting their health and safety. People with mental health and addiction challenges do not have the adequate access to treatment. Crime victims in communities experiencing the most violence lack access to victim services and trauma recovery. We have not scaled up the community safety investments that can make us safer, and it must not just be a, a focus, but it has to be a commitment that we make. The path to improving public safety is by investing in community-based safety solutions that prevent crime before it happens. The Council is committed to advancing safety for all of our neighborhoods, and I look forward to our continued work to achieve this outcome that all New Yorkers deserve. Yesterday, the Council's Committee on Education heard hours of testimony from advocates, providers, and parents on how our city's 3K and early childhood education programs are not being supported by the city to meet the needs of working families and children. There is an immense need for these programs across our city that improve children's educational outcomes and help our working families thrive. It is clear that the DOE has not administered these programs effective, effectively, but the answer cannot be to reduce our investments. As a city government, we have to fix the bureaucratic management issues to get it right for our children, providers, families, and communities. We will be focused on advancing solutions to improve the administration of 3K and protecting investments in it. Caregivers must have a safe must have safe places that they can entrust with the care and education of their children, and the city must support the programs and providers delivering those services. Well, we have a few holidays to highlight this week. February 12th was NAACP Day, observed annually in celebration of the day the NAACP was formed in 1909. As the first and oldest civil rights organization in our country, we would not be here today without the work and advocacy of the NAACP and its chapters across the country. Yesterday, February 14th, 
Nope, that wasn't yesterday, guys. <laughs> February 14th was National Black Literacy Day, which was established to focus on the importance of raising literacy rates in our communities. It was launched by D.L. Mullen, the first black woman to own a bookstore in the city of Chicago. As a lifelong lover of literature, I want to uplift the power of literacy as a way to empower our communities and share their own stories and narratives. February 14th was also National Donor Day, a time dedicated to spreading awareness and education about organ, eye, and tissue donations. We thank all of the donors who make the life-saving choice to help others in need. Your generosity and kindness are truly appreciated. Tomorrow is Kosovo Independence Day in commemoration of the declaration of Kosovo as an independent nation in 2008. Earlier this week, the council hosted a Kosovo Independence Day celebration right here in the chambers. I want to thank council members Borelli, Carr, Felice, Holden, Palladino, and Velasquez for hosting this event. On February 23rd, our Guyanese communities will be celebrating their Republic Day. As the representative for Council District 28, the Great 28, I'm proud to have passed the bill that led to the co-naming of Little Guyana Avenue. So to our Guyanese communities here in New York City and across the world, happy Guyana Republic Day. On February 18th, we will mark the annual Hindu festival of Maha Shivaratri, also known as the Great Night of Shiva. Hindus throughout our city and the world will gather to remember Shiva with prayers, fasting, and meditation. And on February 22nd, Christians will be observing Ash Wednesday, marking the start of Lent, a period for fasting and penance. Finally, please join me in congratulating our colleague, Councilmember Carlina Rivera and her family on the birth of their healthy baby boy. <laughs> I'm excited to be an auntie again, and we're so excited to welcome a new member of our extended council family. This is the council with the largest number of new babies in history. We celebrate council member Rivera, congratulations and many blessings, and we're also proud to be the first council to have created a beautiful lactation room. Now we can move on to our stated agenda. First, we will vote on the following finance items. A transparency resolution approving new designations and changes of certain organizations receiving funding in the expense budget. Next, we'll vote on the following resolutions. Resolution 164, counts, uh, sponsored by Councilmember Linda Lee, calls on the New York City Department of Education to establish Diwali as an official holiday for New York City public school students. With over 227,000 New Yorkers who identify as Indian American, this holiday, which celebrates light over darkness, is an immensely significant and meaningful festival for Hindu, Jain, and Sikh communities. The inclusion of Diwali as a school holiday would signify that our students will no longer have to choose between their faith and their culture and their education. We continue to support the legislative efforts of our state partners in advocating for the Diwali holiday. And since she is in the room, Assemblymember Raj Kumar, we salute you for your legislation. We thank you to our staff, Jan Atwell, for your work on this. Resolution 474, co-sponsored by Council Members Amanda Farias and Shahana Hanif, recognizes February 21st as Mother Language Day in the city of New York. All right. Bangladeshis are one of the fastest growing immigrant groups in New York City, with more than 65,000 Bangladeshi Americans who call New York City home more than in any other city in the United States. Mother Language Day honors the importance of the Bengali, Bangla language to Bangladeshis in our cities and around the world and promotes the acceptance of this linguistic and cultural diversity in our communities. We want to thank Regina Paul and Brenda McKinney for your work on this legislation. Resolution 486, sponsored by Councilmember Althea Stevens, recognizes February 15th as Black Girl Magic Day in the city of New York. On this day, we acknowledge the accomplishments of black women and the issues we face. Black women immensely contribute to the social, economic, cultural, and political fabric of our city and to the nation. 
Thank you to our staff members, Regina Paul and Brenda McKinney, for your work on this legislation. Resolution 488, co-sponsored by Council Members Nantasha Williams and Sylvina Brooks Powers, recognizes the contributions of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated to public service by designating March 3rd annually as Delta Day in the city of New York. Our city is the home of the first graduate chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, which also includes legendary Brooklynite Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman elected to Congress, and now include some New York City Council members. We thank them. Oh, I said if I heard that news, I was going to shut it down. We thank you. We truly thank you for your advocacy and positive impact on our communities, especially in black communities. The, the extraordinary work of this organization cannot be heralded anymore. We thank you for your contributions. And thank you, Deltas, and you beautiful crimson and cream up there. Thank you, staff Regina Paul and Brenda McKinney for your work on this legislation. Next, we'll vote on the following bills. Introduction 897, sponsored by Parks Committee Chair Shaker Krishnan, would co-name 129 city streets and public places in honor of extraordinary individuals and communities based on the requests of council members whose districts include the location. While there are many names worth highlighting in this omnibus bill, I do want to note one in particular because of his role in our body, as well as across the city and state. That is former council member and assembly member Al Van. Dr. Van was a dedicated public servant, educator, community activist, and leader who fought for the empowerment of black communities in Brooklyn and across our entire city and state. He was a champion for central Brooklyn and its neighborhoods of Bedford-Stuyvesant, where he was raised and that he represented in the state assembly and here in the city council. He served as a public school teacher and administrator in the neighborhood before representing it for nearly four decades in elected office. He was a giant who focused on community institutions building and mentorship for so many public servants. Al Van the Man, as he was affectionately known, garnered immense respect. I'm proud we're honoring his profound life and legacy as a city by co-naming the street of his home and a school he taught in as Honorable Dr. Albert Van Way in Brooklyn. So many of us are here in this body because of his efforts and it is fitting that we advance this street co-naming during Black History Month. His grandchildren, are here in city council chambers with us today to celebrate this moment, and I want to publicly acknowledge them. Thank you to our staff members, Christopher Sartori and Patrick Mulvihill for your work. Introduction 886, sponsored by Majority Leader Keith Powers, would extend a moratorium on violations issued to owners who have non-compliant signs that depict their businesses and extend an assistance program to correct signage issues. Thank you to our staff, Audrey Sun. Next, introduction 148A, sponsored by Council Member Justin Brannon, would amend the New York City human rights law to recognize economic abuse as a form of